Hello, so um, welcome to the second uh, video about diffeomorphisms, which um, I, re I can recommend that you watch the spherical coordinates videos first, but they are not necessary. You can watch this right after the first diffeomorphism video, but let me review quickly about what it is about. A diffeomorphism is a function f that goes from an open set in Rn to another open set in Rn. This will be the same dimension here. It's a function that is differentiable on every point at, at every point inside U and has an inverse, F inverse, which goes backwards. It goes from W back to U, from W to U, that is differentiable on W. At every single point in W, it has a derivative. Remember that F has an inverse if and only if it is one to one and on to. Those are two things that we've discussed in the previous video quite a bit. And remember that F inverse is the inverse of F if and only if f inverse of f of x equals x for every x in u, and f of f inverse of y equals y for every y in w. So this is a very straightforward thing that we can do an example, um, a classic example. Suppose we take the map f from negative 2 negative 1 to 1 comma 4, where f of x is equal to x squared. Okay, so this function looks like um, it's going to be smooth, right? So um, we have to check this, the rules. Um, df at any point x, this is actually just equal to df dx. There's only one coordinate. There's, it's a matrix with only one by one matrix because this is from one dimension to one dimension. And this is just simply 2x. Okay, so that is the derivative here. So for example, df at some point in here, between here and here. Um, here, let's make this negative 3 and make this 9. So if I choose a point in here like negative 2, df at negative 2 is the matrix, the 1 by 1 matrix, 2 times negative 2, which equals negative 4. And that's exactly the same as what you know as df dx at evaluated at negative 2. So 2x evaluated at negative 2 is negative 4. We just think of them as matrices in this, um, in this higher dimensional course because it's very rare that it would be... Um, one by one, I know in Calc 1 you didn't write it as a matrix, you just wrote it as the number negative 4, right? In Calc 1 you would just write, oh, df dx at x equal negative 2 equals negative 4. That's how you wrote it in Calc 1, but I'm going to use vector calc notation and linear algebra, um, linear algebra combined with vector calc here to write the st statement as it looks more generally. All right, so that's a function. He is differentiable. So we have that he is differentiable. We just checked that. All right, so now we want to check, okay, we have that he's differentiable. So we're done checking he's differentiable. And the next thing to check is if he has an inverse. Now, he needs to be 1 to 1, so let's just double check that. 1 to 1 is asking if we have f at x1 equal to f at x2. Does this imply x1 equals x2. So we check x1 squared equals x2 squared. If we take um, square rooting on both sides, that would give us x1 equals plus or minus x2. That seems to be a problem because, you know, negative numbers squared give the same value as positive numbers squared. But then look at our domain. If we look at our domain here. Our domain is only negative 3 to negative 1. So we only choose the negative 1, but both in negative 3 to negative 1. So they're both negative. So x1 actually equals x2. All right? So this is 1 to 1. Yes. And he is differentiable because this one, right? The first thing we asked was differentiable. And we said yes. 
because we had this matrix of derivatives and it's one to one, yes, because our domain is such that it has that it's one to one, okay? It has a restricted domain where it's one to one. And then we have to check, oh, is it onto? Onto? Question mark. So onto says given any y, given y in one to nine in our this is our set W, 1 to 9. So that's where we're looking for our y's. We have to find x. Find x such that in, where does f, x have to be? Between negative 3 and 1. Such that x squared equals y, and the answer is x equals negative square root of y. y has a square root because it's a number between 1 and 9, and we need to choose the negative one because x has to end up between negative 3 and negative 1, right, because of our domain. So yes, it is on to. So that's the justification for why it's on to. This is the justification why it's 1 to 1. This is the different... Justification why it's differentiable. Sorry, everything is so crowded here. And the last thing we need to do is find out is F inverse differentiable. But we need to talk about this. What is our F inverse? So let me just um, erase this work where I showed one to one. We have it done already. And let's look here and say, okay, what is F inverse? Try f inverse, which is going to go from the negative 1, 9, uh, sorry, the positive 1 to 9, it's going from our w set, f inverse starts at w, and it goes back into the u set, f inverse goes from w to u, so this is going to go to our u is negative 3, negative 1, and we want to try f inverse to be, what should it be, f inverse equal to of an input y should equal it looks like we should take negative square root of y because the proof of onto where we found an answer as long as that answer was unique can be our inverse so negative square root y so that's what we're going to check and then we have to check we have to check the two qualities that are needed to verify that something is in fact the inverse first we have to check this So we check f inverse of f of x. What is f of x? f of x is x squared, so we're asking f inverse of x squared. And what is f inverse? It's negative square root. So negative square root of x squared. This equals negative absolute value of x. The square root of x squared is absolute value of x. Because it takes x, whether it's positive or negative, it squares it, and then square root makes the positive square root. So that's like an absolute value. And we have a negative sign in front, so it's negative absolute value of x. But our x is coming from, where is our x coming from? x is coming from negative 3, 1. This actually equals x because he's in negative 3, comma 1, negative 1. So since x is a negative number, negative the, this is the absolute value of x. Negative of the absolute value of x is equal to x itself because x was a negative number. Next we have to check f of f inverse of any input y. Now the input's y we've been drawing in green. So y. This would be f of, what is f inverse of y? We're trying negative square root of y. And what does f do? f squares. So this is negative square root of y squared. And negative square root of y squared, well, let's work that out. y is a number between 1 and 9, so he has a square root. He's a nice positive number, and after you get square root him, he's between 1 and 3. And then you negated him, but then you squared him. 
And if you negate the square root of something, it ends up, this is the same as negative 1 squared times square root y squared, and that is just 1 times y, which equals y. Okay, so everything is fine. And we do, in fact, have that our f inverse is this. So we don't have to try it. We can say f inverse is negative square root of y. Right? So since we have that, I'm going to write that up here. We've already checked it. So I can certainly put it over here on the board. Sorry, everything is so cramped, but this is because we're stuck doing these virtual meetings. f. We have f inverse of y. equals negative square root of y. That's how our f inverse is. And I can erase all the stuff below in which we figured out what f inverse was because we have one more thing to check. We checked it's differentiable and we checked it has an inverse. And having an inverse meant it was one to one and onto. And we checked that it had an inverse, so it had this and this. So we have the right formula for the f inverse. And now the last thing we need to check is that the inverse is differentiable. So we need to check that this formula f inverse is differentiable. Well, f inverse is differentiable. At, at any number between 1 and 9, on 1 to 9, because this is, in the, this is a subset of 0 to infinity. And the square root function is differentiable as long as you're not at 0. So square root function, remember, if you look at the square root function, the square root function looks like this. So it's not different. At 0, he doesn't have a derivative. Negative square root function looks like this. So the negative square root function, this guy, has no derivative at 0. And he's not even defined for numbers less than 0. But between 0 and all the way up to infinity, this square root is defined. And so we get f inverse is differentiable from 1 to 9, because that's in the set where it's OK. So that's the last thing we needed to check. And so we are done. We know that f negative 3, 1 to 1, 9 is a definite morphism is differentiable, right? So that was a very simple example. Um, I did a more serious example before um, in the previous part, but I just wanted to go over a simple one now, which is something that you should all understand well. Right, thank you.